the whole point of boxing is to hit and don't get hit. And in this video, we'll go through all the fundamental boxing defensive moves that you gotta know to make your opponent miss and don't get hit. You didn't dodge that point, so you definitely have some room for improvement. But all the jokes aside, we have four different groups of defensive moves. The first group is your defensive footwork. Then we got our defensive actions from the waist, our defensive moves with hands, and unorthodox defensive moves. And we will begin with the defensive footwork. And the first move will be the step back, which looks like this. This defensive move is perfect at the long range and at the middle range, but we don't use it at the close range because in this stance, I can just jump back and it will be too risky. So I either use it at the long range or at the middle range. And the advantage of this defensive move is that it gets you completely out of range and you get in the safe position. For example, after a slip, I will be still in the range, so my opponent will be able to hit me. But if I step back, he won't be able to reach me uh, if he stays at the same spot. So it gets me out of range, and that is its advantage. And also, if you're fast enough, you can step back and then bounce back with a punch to counter your opponent, and you can throw punches simultaneously with the step back. So it's a really good defensive move that should be in your arsenal. And now let's talk how we do this. And I better point my face to that side so you can see me move my head. The whole point is not to move your feet like this, that would be a huge mistake, but to move your head. Watch this line, I step back and my head moves. So I don't move my feet, the whole point is to move my core and my head. And here is how you do it. You stay in your fighting stance, with your body weight in the middle, or on your lead foot, or slightly on your back foot. And then I drastically push myself with my lead foot, and I land on my rear foot, and then on my lead foot. And it looks like this. That's the step back. Also, you can take two or even three step backs in a row. One, two, three. But here I am already on the ropes, so it's not really recommended. So better you go one, two, and then to the side. Yeah, that's basically how you do the step back. And the common mistakes would be to drop your hand when you're doing this or moving your feet and not your head. So make sure to avoid those mistakes and use the step back. And our second defensive footwork move will be the side step, which we already learned in one of my previous videos. And it looks like this. Let's go through it one more time. You stay in your fighting stance, you rotate your heel to the side, rotate your shoulder, keep this hand up, and then bring this foot to the starting position. And once again, the whole point is to move your head over the center line. For example, this is the line of attack, and I move my head off it, and I go here. And in the same way, I can go to the right. Yeah, that's the side step, and now, let me show it with my partner. Okay, and here's how you use the step back. Once again, it is used at the long range, and for example, my partner throws a punch at me, and I just go back. I push myself with my lead foot, I go back, and here I either go to the side, or I can come back and punch him. For example, he throws a punch, and I go with a counter. Or for example, he throws a punch, I go back and throw my punch in case if he really commits to his punch, and I will hit him if he goes forward too fast and too hard. So yeah, basically I can dodge every single punch with this move at the middle and at the long range. And to use the side step, I will also stay at one spot, wait for him to throw the punch, for example, the jab, and I would go here. Let me show it one more time. An important moment will be to move your head and to keep this hand up, just in case if he fakes the jab and throws the hook. So I have this hand up and I will block it and don't get hit in the jaw. And if he throws the cross, I go like this once again. I go to the side, I keep this hand up and go here. And also I can use this move to counter punch him. For example, he throws the cross and I counter his liver. He throws the jab and I throw an uppercut to counter him. 
And now let's move to the defensive actions from the waist. And in this group of defensive moves, we have four techniques. The sweeps, then the rolls, the dog, and the lean back. And we will begin with the sweeps. The sweeps look like this to one side and to the other side. And there are very different variations how you can do them. And we basically use them to uh, sweep the straight punches and the uppercuts sometimes. So let's get straight into it and let me explain how you do them. And we will begin with our frontal stance. So get in the frontal stance and the first progression will be just go and touch your knee. For example, I touch my left knee with my right hand and vice versa. And it looks like this. The key pointers will be to rotate your hips, your heels, so I don't do it like this. I rotate all this side and I cover my face here with my shoulder. And I watch forward, I don't look down or to the side. And it looks like this. So that was our first progression. Then our second progression will be to stay in the frontal stance and do the same, but without touching our knee. And this hand will go slightly up like this. So I cover my jaw, I move my head out of the attack line, I rotate my heels and hips and shoulders. And it looks like this. And I watch forward at my opponent, so I don't turn my head away like this. That was our second progression. Our third progression will be doing the same, but with a step forward. I stay in the front of stance, I take a step with my left foot, and I sweep to the left. I move my right shoulder forward, I rotate my hip here, and I watch forward. And one more time, it looks like this. And to the other side. Also, you can do slips with steps to the sides. For example, to the right and to the left. And also with the steps back. Yeah, that was your third progression. And our fourth progression will be already in the fighting stance. So get in your fighting stance and touch your knees from here like this. You cover your jaw with the shoulder, you rotate your hips and move your head out of the attack line like this. Yeah, and then our fourth progression will be doing basically the same, but without touching our knees. So this hand goes slightly up. You can keep your hands statically when you sleep like this, but I prefer moving them slightly up just in case if my opponent is faster than me and I won't be able to just move my head in time so I don't get hit and I block it. So that's why I move my hand slightly up. So you do this at one place and the sixth progression will be doing the slips with the steps. For example, with the step forward and slightly to the side. So I don't go like this. I go slightly forward and to the left like this. And if I want to go to the right, I can do two different steps. For example, I can take a step to the side like this, or I can go with a step forward like this, or even the third way, I can take a step with my lead foot and go like this. So to the rear side, it's a little bit more complicated because you have three different variations. So let's get through them all one more time. To the side, forward with a diagonal step, and with the step of the lead foot. And to the left, just like this. And you have those different kinds of steps because you have different boxing tactics. For example, if I'm a taller opponent and I will do a sweep just in one spot, so because I don't have to cut the range and I want to keep it, and from here I will throw a punch by it staying at one place. But if I'm a shorter guy, I want to close the distance, so I will take a step with my sweep to cut the distance and then attack my opponent because if I do a sweep just at one spot, I won't reach him. And in the same way, I sweep to this side with a step or with a step to the side or even with this step. 
because from here I can uh, I can uh, create an angle. Yeah, that's basically it. Those are your progressions for practicing slips, and here is an interesting way to practice them so you can see if you're making mistakes. And let me show it to you. Stay in front of a mirror and make a line on your mirror. For example, I put a jump rope here so I can see this vertical line. But you can take a black tape and put it on your mirror. So get in front of the mirror and practice each of the progressions that I showed you. First, just touch your knees and move your head over the center line. Then do the same without touching your knees, then add steps, and then repeat all those progressions in your fighting stance. Like this, like this, like this, like this, and then add steps to the side, forward, and even here. Yeah, that's basically how you practice slips, and now let's get into the rolls. We use the rolls at the close and at the middle range to mostly dodge the hooks, but also you can dodge uh, other punches, I mean uh, straights and uppercuts when you exit from attack. And this defensive move looks like this, to the left and to the right. And now let's get into progressions, how you can learn it. So the first progression will be just get in your frontal stance, take a step to the left, drop your body weight down, so your head moves down, and then go up as you bring your rear foot closer. So it will look like this. And to the other side. Yeah, the key pointers will be here not to bend your back too much. You can do it just a little bit, but don't bend it like this because you will lose your balance. And it's ideal to use your legs for this. So bend your knees like this. And you can keep your hands either static or you can go like this and then put this hand up just in case if your opponent missed the first hook and he goes with the second so your hand is here and you don't get hit. So once again, our first progression like this. Then our second progression will be doing basically the same in our fighting stance. So get in the fighting stance, take a step to the left, go down, and then go up as you bring your right foot closer, just like this, and then to the right, like this. That's pretty much how you do it, and the key pointers, one X again, will be not bending your back, don't look down because you won't see anything, and if you do that, your opponent can hit you hard with the uppercut or hit the back of your head, and that's not really what you want, so keep your hand up and watch forward and practice it first in your frontal stance and then in your fighting stance. Yeah, those were the progressions and I will put a clip of Canelo doing his head movement workout so you can see how you can also practice your rolls with this like plastic stick. So now you know how to do the rolls and we'll move in the dogs. It's probably the simplest defensive move, and it looks like this. You just squat a little bit. You can dodge straight punches and hooks with this defensive move, because they will just go over you. But if someone hits you with an uppercut, it will only multiply <laughs> the damage, so don't do that against the uppercuts. And you can do it in the frontal stance and in the fighting stance. Keep your hands, don't drop them, and do it like this, but you don't have to duck too deep, so don't do the full squat, just a little bit, so you don't get hit. All defensive moves should be short, and you don't have to do, for example, slips like this, or rolls like this, because you will waste your time and energy. So they should be short and just enough, so your opponent's punches will even slightly touch you but won't deal any damage. That's the perfect scenario. And the disadvantage of this defensive move is that you will end up in the same position. For example, after a slip, you can go to the side. After a roll, you can go to the side. But after a dock, you will go back in the same position. And yeah, that it's disadvantage. And now let's talk about the lean back. 
So you can do it either with your back and it will look like this, or you can also take a step back with your rear foot. And I prefer taking a step with the rear foot because from here I will be able to go to the side, I will be able to go back, I will be able to go with the slip, but if I do it like this, it will be, I will feel a little off balance and yeah, I will be a little bit more vulnerable. I'm sorry, I will be a little bit more vulnerable. So yeah, take a step back and move your head from the attack line. For example, here is my head and it moves back. I don't take just step and leave my head here. It will be a huge mistake. I move my head back and I keep my hands up. And then I can go back with a counter punch like Floyd Mayweather did all the time. So yeah, those were all our defensive actions from the waist. And now let me show them all with my partner. Let's begin with the sweeps. I can do them pretty much at every range. And for example, here is at the long range, how I sweep, then at the middle range, and here is at the close range. Yeah, this is how I do it. And I can also do them while staying at one spot. For example, he throws the cross, and I am a longer fighter, and I want to keep the distance. So he throws his cross, and I hit him with a long lead hook. So I stay at one spot, and I do the sweep and then counter. Also, I can do it with a step. For example, he throws his cross. I can step in if I am a shorter fighter. I will cut the distance, and from here, I will continue attacking him. So you can do it with a step or while remaining at one spot. And to the right, you can also do it at one spot, for example, like this. Or I can also take steps to the side. I can take a step forward like this. And from here, I will be able to create an angle and continue attacking him. Or I can even take a step forward with my lead foot and go like this. And also I can create an angle and attack him. And now let's move to the rows. I usually use rows at the middle and the close range. For example, at the close range, he throws his elite hook. I do a roll and from here I attack him. Or at the middle range, he throws his rear hook and I move like this. Also, I can use it to exit from my attacks. For example, when I finish with my rear hand, it's really good to go back to my stance with the roll and I'm in a safe position and I can continue fighting. Then the next move will be the duck. For example, he throws a hook and I just squat like this. For example, he throws his straight punch and I dodge it like this. And if he throws one too, I will be pretty much because I will dodge his jab and then I will be caught with his cross. Or if he throws an uppercut, I will be yeah, uh, receiving more damage. So it is a risky move, but simple, and there are definitely scenarios to use it, but I prefer slips and rolls. And our last technique in this group of defensive move is the lean back. You can do it just by moving your back like this, but I don't recommend doing this, and you should take a step back like this. So you can uh, dodge the punch, and from here you can either go further back, for example, you can go then to the side, or you can come back with a punch, like this. Yeah, that's how you use these defensive moves. And now let's talk how you can protect yourself with your hands. And in this group of defensive moves, we got blocks, shield block, elbow blocks, then catches and parries. And we're gonna go through all of them now. So to block, you would need to move your hands just a little bit higher so you protect your chin and then you move them to your forehead when you see a punch coming. And also you don't stay too upright and you slightly bend your knees and slightly sit down when you block so you can easily absorb the damage. Throw a punch at me. No, no, I So yeah, that's basically how you do the block. The pointers will be not to bring your hands too high and don't block in front of you. Your hands should be on you. You should see through this gap and don't move them too high because you will open up your body. 
So stay tight and block hard one more time. Yeah, that's how you block. Then you can block punches to the body by moving your elbows closer. So for example, he throws a jab to the body and I will do it like this, like this. Yeah, that's how you use the elbow blocks. Then you have the shield block. When you keep this hand up and you move it like this, just imagine that you're talking on the phone and you're picking it up. For example, he throws his lead hook and I move it like this. Yeah, and the pointers will be not move from the punch, for example, if he throws, I don't move like this because he will more time to gain speed and his punch will be even harder. So I don't just block, I move slightly at him. So he throws the hook and I go at him and his hook will deflect and basically miss me. So I don't go to this side and ideally I go slightly at him with this block. Also, there are different ways. Some people tell that you should at the same time protect your liver and keep it like this, or you can keep it high like this. This will give you more protection, but there will be a risk that you will open up your body, and this will protect your body at the same time, but it may not cover uh, the, your whole temple. So yeah, you can basically do this uh, in those two ways, and it depends on your preferences. So one more time, throw the rear hook, please, like this, and do it now. Yeah, move at him just a little bit, and move this hand up. And also, if he throws body punches, I can use elbow blocks, and they look like this. I just slightly bend my side, and I protect uh, my body with my elbow, and then there is my pelvis. Throw here, like this, and this one. So yeah, that's how I use the elbow box. And now let's move to the catches. So for example, he throws a punch and I move my hand slightly forward, not too forward because he will be able to faint and hit me just a little bit and I catch his punch. Do it one more time. Yeah, like this. And also I can use my lead hand for this too. Like this. But if I move it uh, too far away from me, he will faint and hit my jaw. Show it how it's done. Yeah, that's <laughs> how it's done. And now uh, let's talk about the parrots. It's very similar to the catch, but now I deflect his hand just a little bit. Throw the jab. So yeah, I basically move his hand down or to the side with my uh, hand. And I can do it with my lead hand. Yeah, that's how it's done, and it's really good to counter. For example, he throws the jab, I parry, and I throw when his hand is down. Yeah, that's how you use your hands. And now we covered three basic groups of defensive moves, and then there are unorthodox defensive moves. And it includes more advanced techniques, for example, like long guard, so you basically push your opponent from you, you block his. Uh, uh, attacks with this hand or like this, for example, go here. For example, I see that he wants to throw punches and I just keep my hand like this here so he can't throw it without me seeing them. For example, he wants to throw with his left hand. I will feel it, yeah, and I will counter him. Yeah, for example, this is. Then you can also block punches with your forehead because it's a really thick bone. For example, he throws punches. Yeah, and I just <laughs> block them with my forehead. Then there is the shoulder roll. And there are many other defensive moves, but they are not fundamental. And you can use them, and you should use them, but it's up to your preferences. And now let's talk how you combine all different defensive moves together. And the whole point of this will be to keep your balance all the time and not to lose it. For example, if I do a slip like this, from here I'm in an unstable position and I will fall and yeah, I will be a vulnerable target. But if I do a slip like this, you can see that I'm balanced and I can go from here with the roll, I can go from here with the pullback, I can go from here with the style step, and yeah, that's it. You should always keep your balance. 
And to do that, you should pay attention to the alignment of your shoulders and feet. And the whole point is not to let your shoulder overfall your feet. For example, here you see that my shoulder is further than my foot. But if I rotate it like this, it will be in one line. And here I'm balanced. But here I am not balanced. Then with the roll, I do it like this. I don't go forward too much. You can see that my shoulders like overfall my lead foot and I can fall here. And my opponent can press me down and I just go down like this. But if I move like this, I will be balanced and stable. And then with the pullback, if I go like this, you can see that this shoulder overfalls and I will fall if my opponent double ups on his attack. But if I go like this, I will be more balanced. And yeah, that's the secret to combining defense. And always, for example, you dodge one punch and you don't stay here. You don't exit to the same spot. You did a defensive move and then you either break the distance or attack your opponent, but don't stay in front of him. So that's how you combine your defensive moves. You always gotta keep balance and always gotta keep moving. So pay attention to the alignment of your shoulders and feet. And don't forget that your opponent always is going after you. So, so you don't have to stay longer than a split of a second and move your head at all times by using defensive footwork, defensive actions from the waist, and using your hands. Yeah, that's basically it for this video lesson. Make sure to be subscribed to learn more from me and check out the KO Boxing Package, which is a training plan that will help you to get from a complete beginner to an advanced boxer. First link in the description. Thanks for watching and stay sharp.